video we're going to take a quick look at PIBs which are often overlooked as investments and are very interesting and produce quite a good income. So what are PIBs? Uh, PIB stands for Perpetual Interest Bearing Shares. Though not all of them are actually perpetual but that's that's what they're often called. Those most many of them are perpetual and these are typically issued by building societies or other sorts of mutuals i.e. companies that can issue shares so instead they issue these PIBs and they behave similarly to preference shares that's the sort of um, normal country company equivalent and you need to do independent research on these information about corporate bonds is readily available whereas PIBs require a lot more effort and a lot more time so perhaps not for everybody and we'll just look at some examples of some PIBs Bank of Ireland 13 point something percent perpetual subordinated bonds sub stands for subordinated which means uh, if the Bank of Ireland was to default you would be quite low down the list of people that were going to get money but as a result it pays a very high coupon uh, you got Coventry six point something and this has got a call date this is when um, Coventry Building Society is able to buy these back and they'll buy them back for a hundred pence you got a very simple one, Manchester 8% PIBs, that should be perpetual. And you got Yorkshire 13.5 convertible notes, which are often listed under PIBs. These are very interesting because these convert uh, into a kind of share of Yorkshire Building Society. It's a um, profit participating deferred share, uh, which is a kind of hybrid between debt and equity. And the does that in 2025 so they are potentially quite interesting though I don't completely understand them the offer documents not very clear and that's one of the things you have to read is the offer document to understand the specifics because not all pub pibs are the same so you have to really look into it and understand the subtle differences between them so you can choose which is the best investment but look at the attraction of pibs high level of income the yields on these things are quite impressive and in a low interest rate environment it's very attractive um, your building societies have in general behaved better than the banks um, and they're bought like shares so they're, they're pretty liquid PIBs are not as actively traded as other um, preference shares but there is liquidity in the market for small investors and you can get between six and ten percent at present which is pretty attractive you should be quite happy with that level of yield though there is risks associated with them consider Northern Rock or Bradford and Bingley you, if you've been following the news you'll know they're not doing terribly well and had you bought uh, their PIBs which is essentially a loan to the building society you would not be terribly happy um, and they can some of them you have to read the offer document to get a good idea of this but it can be used in a bail-in which is basically instead of getting other people to bail it out they can cut um, the interest on your bonds and do various things to them that are not very good if the building site gets in trouble so you can often be called on to take losses to protect the society and the more subordinated, i.e. the lower down the debt is, the more risk that you're taking on. And with some of these PIBs, the coupon can be cut, so you can get a lower interest rate paid, which is not good. Uh, when you're researching these, you'll probably hear a lot about this Basel 3, which is new rules that have been brought into the government, which um, deals with the capital that building societies have to have the sort of buffers they have for losses basically balance sheet strength they've changed the rules so PIBs are no longer considered this tier one capital this is the really good sort of capital um, it's the the highest l level the highest tier and s as a result of these not being 
tier one capital building societies are not quite as uh, enthusiastic about issuing them which may drive up demand a little um, when you're looking to invest in these you have to consider several things it's hard to research if you're not going to do a lot of research these are not for you it takes hours and hours and hours to understand just one of these investments so you've got to have plenty of time to do things like reading the offer document you have to check all provisions and uh, conversions like I talked about those Yorkshire ones that turn into uh, the, this other um, asset class in 2025 you have to decide if you're happy to hold that otherwise you'll have to sell it before it's called and that could cause problems uh, you are when you're looking at call provisions you want to imagine if it was called at that time what would your yield to maturity be and are you happy with that you want to check the default sometimes these pibs are quite complicated to understand what happens if the bond um, or rather the pib goes into default uh, you want to start by working out where it is in the capital structure is it uh, near the top of the pile I I don't know like the very top would be your asset backed which I don't think there is any pibs that are asset backed and then you've got the subordinated debt right at the very bottom and you'll get more uh, payments you'll get bigger income the more subordinated it is but if something goes wrong in the building society you will then lose quite a lot if you've got subordinated debt for example look at the the co-op bonds they fell dramatically and the people who held the subordinated debt have been hit very hard by that you also want to understand the issuing company it's not good enough just to know about the bond you need to read the annual report I would say more than one year you want to get a good idea of how this society works you want to look through their loan book which is not easy uh, hopefully you'd be able to identify any potential problems for example if a building site had huge amounts of commercial loans something went wrong in that area um, you can look at building societies that have acquired other building societies usually the loan books they've acquired have problems with them so you've got to be a bit skeptical about that you want to look through their product just to get a general idea of what the building society does and you want to see where their profits come from um, for example if you'd done that for Northern Rock you would have seen there was quite a few problems with where their profits were coming from a lot of it was uh, selling on this kind of packaging up and uh, shredding mortgages around uh, selling bits of mortgages on that was where a lot of Northern Rock's money came from which is not nearly as reliable as just uh, selling a mortgage and collecting the interest which is what you would want a building society to do so you need to be very thorough and very skeptical and do lots and lots of research these things are complicated and you can't just go on to Morningstar and it won't just tell you everything you need to know there's serious research needs to be done but overall I do think these are quite good investments especially if you're near retirement definitely have a look at these as a small part of your portfolio